Hey you folks, Quilly Team here, and welcome to Let's Try Silicon Zeros. Do you like games that make you feel stupid? Because this is the game for you. It reminds me a lot of uh, Space Cam. Space Cam was a puzzle game based on real life sort of sciencey principles that made me feel really stupid. Silicon Zeros is a puzzle game based on real life sciencey principles. In this case, it's about designing CPUs and using real kind of techniques and 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 mechanics and modules and things like that. Um, you know, in a it's sort of sort of a simplified interpretation, but that you would use to build actual CPUs. And it can make me feel pretty stupid so far. Um it is, uh, so it is a puzzle game. It's apparently got about 70 puzzles entirely. Uh, they're divided by these sort of boards over here. The story is that it's 1960s, and you are one of the first companies to try to build CPUs in an area that will eventually become known as Silicon Valley here. Um, I haven't unlocked everything yet. On this third board, you can see there's this little line going over here, so there's going to be yet another, uh, another board of puzzles over there to see how it goes. We've also got this, like, extra little board over here to go through. Got a really interesting little story, I think that is actually quite lovely, gives some extra context to what you're doing. I mean, ultimately, you're trying to design a cool, functional CPU. I mean, I'm talking about something that reads and writes from, like, RAM, um, executes instructions, executes programs, all that kind of stuff you will be building in this particular puzzle, uh, in this particular game. Some of the puzzles are, you know, learning some of the basics. Some of them are to create an intermediary sort of salable product, uh, you know, just a generic um, electronic component. What we're going to do here is I'm going to do three of the puzzles on this beginning board here. Um, so that shouldn't really be spoilery because it's really still very intro level. And then I'm going to tackle on one of the slightly later examples. We're going to try this micro CPU, which I actually haven't tried yet, but I think it should be a lot of fun to put together. Um, so if you're worried about spoilers, um, maybe, you know, you can go ahead and switch out at that point. But the first three that we're going to do here is not really a spoiler because they're very, still very tutorially. So we're going to start with this placing exercise over here. So you can see there's a little bit of a story. I'm not going to go through and read it because when you play, if you play the game, um, reading the whole story in a row is going to make a lot more sense. But in this particular exercise, we are here to test these new adder modules that uh, Carol has uh, fabricated for us. So these things take two numbers, add them together, and output a result. Our goal here is going to be to simply output a value of four. On the starting board over here, we have this uh, fixed number outputter over here. Now, normally you can right click on these components and configure things about them. In this particular scenario, I can't change. This thing is fixed to only output the number one. And I only have access to one module over here, which is the adder modules. So we can go and plop that down. That, that's all we have access to in this particular exercise. Again, just learning the very basics. What we're gonna do is we're gonna wire this value one into here. And in fact, we're gonna wire them into both of these. So you can see one plus one equals two. If I were to go and put a second adder module on here, then I could go two plus two is equal to four. And just like that, we complete the puzzle. Very, very early on. Uh, the next one we're gonna look at is the rewrite exercise over here. And in this one, we are going to be interacting with RAM, with external memory over here. So this represents our, our RAM chip. This particular one only has one slot, can only hold one value over here. If we mouse over, we can see our goal. We can also use this button over here. So our goal is to set this to eight. Starting at zero, we want to set it to eight. We have a limited number of parts to work with uh, once again. But we have a few more. So we're starting with one adder on the board over here. And actually, uh, we don't have the ability to add another adder. We This time, we do have the ability to add our own constant number bit. And we, oh, once again, cannot configure it in this particular exercise. Um, yeah, without configuring modules. So we can't tune that. But we do have the ability. So we have the ability to output a constant number one. Okay. What else have we got? We've got two of these different types of state modules. We have the ability to read from RAM and write to RAM over here. And that's the goal of this. We're going to... This one here, we've got to get this one memory slot all the way up to a value of eight to successfully test that this memory works. So what we're going to do is we are going to be reading from memory slot number one. You can see as soon as I put the one in here, so memory slot number one has got a value of zero. So this returns a zero over here. Then we're going to be taking that value and we're going to be adding one to it for a value of one. Then we want to write back to the memory. So we're going to write over here. We're going to write the value of one, the new value. And once again, into slot number one. Um, can I adjust this so that it's not all 
crossing actually I, I think it's mathematically impossible not to have at least one crossed wire but we can probably make it a little prettier here um, because what you can do is you can control click and drag this and there we go that's a little prettier than than before right excellent so we read in the memory we add one to it and then we output that and we're always reading and writing to memory slot number one so now you can see we haven't completed the puzzle yet why is it because we have to use this test button this test button will allow this to run um, your CPUs operate on a tick basis every tick something happens now some things uh, operate instantly like for example your adder over here operates instantly well until you get to puzzle board number three and then you've got all sorts of electronic timing questions that come up but every tick certain things will operate on every tick an example of that anything with a circle over here this is basically like a little clock every time it hits the top it will execute whatever's going on. So the writer writes a value once per tick. So we can advance one at a time by clicking this arrow or using the arrow on a keyboard. I'm gonna go ahead and hit it. You're gonna see exactly what happens. In memory, we've currently got the value of zero, which we're reading here. We're going to write the value of one and that will happen when the tick processes. So once this tick processes, you'll see this turn to a one. Boom, one, and then it's ready to go for the next tick. You can keep going manually or you can hit play. And if we do that, we'll see it go two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And just like that, we complete another puzzle. Excellent. I'm going to do one more over here. This is going to be the increment puzzle to leave the beginnings board. Again, still very sort of intro and tutorially. Um, so we're still, you know, uh, I don't think it's going to be too much of a spoiler for people. So this exercise is going to be a little bit more involved because what we have to do is we have to go through each memory slot so slots zero through five, well, it might vary depending on the puzzle. You can see, or depending on the test, what the heck's going on here? Well, in this scenario, and in fact, most scenarios, there's up to 100 different tests that your circuit is going to have to complete. Each has its own initial memory and its own separate goal. Uh, if your circuit fails on any one of these, you'll be notified about it. Um, but, so the point will be, we're going to be having to design something relatively flexible. Our goal will be to go through each slot in memory for each test, although it happens in the background automatically. You don't actually have to run that a hundred times. Go through each slot and add one to it. That's it. Go through memory starting at slot zero and sets each slot to its original value plus one. Okay, that's not too different than what we've done before with the exception that we have to go through a series of slots. Now, what parts do we have available for this? We have a reader. That makes sense because we clearly have to read the value of a slot. And then we have a writer. Okay, so we clearly have to set the value of the slot to something else. Obviously, we're going to need an adder in between, right? I mean, our goal really is going to be something like take the value of a memory, add one to it, and then output that sum over here. That's that's going to be what we're, we're, we're generating. That's, that's the easy part, right? It's very similar to what we did um, before. We're taking in a value, we're adding one to it, and then storing it back in there. The question is, how do we loop from slot zero all the way to slot whatever? In this case, slot number four here, but it's going to depend on the test. How do we loop through that? I mean, what we could do, absolutely, is we could go ahead, we can copy and paste. So we could say something like, ah, I got it. Um, if I grab you, copy, paste over here and paste over here, I can say, ah, so this will be for, for slot zero. So memory slot zero, we're going to read you and then write you. And then here we're going to use memory slot number one, read you and write you, and then just keep copying and pasting over and over and over um, until, you know, because we just figure out which test has the most stuff and do that. But one of our goals is always to try to use the least number of modules in this. The ideal is actually six in this scenario. We're already using eight, obviously, and this is not extensible because what happens if we had a thousand memory slots well we can't just keep copying this so clearly something is not quite right here we rather than having a hard coded in memory slot and repeating this over and over we want this to start at zero and then go up two three or one two three four five and so on and so forth until it finishes the test well what we're going to do for that is we're going to make use of this latch now this latch is a very interesting little module. What it does is it outputs a number, but on every tick, and you can see the circle here, what it does is it grabs the store value here and puts it in stored, right? So this stored value starts at zero. So if we do this, for example, we start at 
memory slot zero. That's pretty cool. But then if we go and let's say I copy this adder and paste it in here and say, okay, but on every tick, so you'll store zero, we're going to add one to it. And then we're going to take that and store it back here. Let's, how can I make this a little, a little prettier? There we go. Something like this. Okay. If we do this, what's going to happen every tick, it's going to store a higher and higher value in the latch, which will advance us through the various memory slots over here. So let's test that and see what's going on. So this is going to be tick zero, where we're reading from memory slot zero, adding one to it, and then storing it back in. Excellent. Next, now this is advanced over here. Oops. Sorry, by box selecting, it went back into edit mode. You can see now it's displaying number one. So we're going to do memory slot number one, read and write, and so on. And if we just hit play, it'll go through the rest. And in the background, it's actually executing every other test at the same time. And just like that, we have completed the puzzle and we use the ideal of six pieces. So that is an intro to the basics. It does get considerably more complicated because again, you start building actual CPUs over here. Um, you, and actually, I think I've blanked it out already. Yeah, yeah, so you won't be able to see my solution. I can restore my last successful solution with this button over here. You can see the memory is a lot more complicated because this is actually storing actual instructions over here. And then you've got modules, so you could like, just, I'm not gonna go through the puzzle here, but um, instruction decoder, and then let's say we just read in, um, so I'm gonna change this to slot zero. So we're gonna read in from slot zero and then pass that slot into an instruction decoder. And you can see here, it breaks down this entire, um, this entire memory value into an opcode, a source, a target, and a destination number, which you will use to do things with. And in this particular exercise, this CPU actually has support for three different instructions. It can set a register number, whatever that is. It can add a two registers together. The add R um, takes a register, well, in this case, it's going to take register six and register two and adds those two values together and then stores it in a, in a third location. In this case, it stores it back into location number two. And then finally, there's a save instruction we've got to support, which is to take a value from a register. In this case, take the value in registers three and wait, set the memory slot. Oh, no, it sets memory slot three. Oh, it reads register three to get a value which is a memory location. And in that memory location in RAM, it stores the value that is in the register slot five. So three instructions and you've got to build a CPU that does this. And all of a sudden you've got a, a program, you can program in some sort of little simple math stuff. So you get a lot of extra complexity. You can see this multiply one complexity nightmare. I'm gonna tackle this one next. I, I did a couple of sort of naive tries at it, uh, but I think I've got the solution for this figured out. We're going to go ahead, though, and look at the micro CPU. So again, if you want to avoid spoilers of maybe uh, later on um, um, puzzles, then maybe this is the place to, to cut out. But I'm going to try to tackle this micro CPU thing. And I don't have. I haven't tried it yet. Um, so I'm curious to see how it goes. Now, this here is interesting because it is a CPU instead of using a registry. So in um, the registry over here is something that can store a bunch of values sort of more locally as opposed to setting it in memory. Um, and our previous CPUs did that. But this one here is instead of using a reg file, it wants to use a, a single register, the accumulator. Now, the thing is, I don't think we actually have to use an actual register over here because as far as I can think, a register with one slot is exactly the same as a latch. Because what it does is it takes an input, right? If we do a little test here, right? Let's say we have a number one. Um, it takes an input and then every tick it, it stores at. So right now, I guess the big difference between the latch and the register is the register starts with a nil value as opposed to a zero. If we advance forward one tick, they end up in the same sort of situation. So, oops, I think we can implement an accumulator as a, as a latch, although we might not want the zero, the, the difference is again, the, the zero. So I don't know. And I'm, I'm assuming that in actual design, one's probably cheaper than the other. But it's a, you know, stores a value in a single reg file, single value in, in, I don't know, There might maybe there's a bonus to doing one way or another. I'll use the register file over here. So what do we have to do? We have to um, go through this and we've got a series of instructions. We've got load a value from the accumulator. No, 
Load accumulator puts a value in the accumulator. This adds a value to whatever's in the accumulator itself. Um, this stores the accumulator value into a memory slot. And that's it. Those are the three instructions we've got to support. Now, um, you can actually see that pretty easily because you've got your instruction decoder over here. But then you've also got this op select, and the op select will automatically be set to um, the values that are actually um, present in all the programs in the scenario. So we've got to st f um, support three different behaviors. So let's see. Obviously, and I'm going to make use of my little scratch palette over here. Obviously, we have to go um, and process all the memory slots. Go go through all the instructions over here. So this is a little thing you can actually save things. If I like, box select over here, you can go and hit this plus and it just saves it on your palette for later. So all this does is this advances through memory one slot at a time. That's its job. And if you go there, it's kind of nice. You can just stick the two things together. And then if you pull them apart and it's got the wire, um, but you can keep things a little tighter. So this is going to loop through or yeah, increment its way, loop through its way through all of the memory, not actual loop, just increment through. It's going to load the memory one time, one piece at a time. It's going to load it into the instruction decoder over here. Now, as a programmer, when I first approached the CPU design thing, my idea was, well, I've got to look at what the instruction is and then try to s just activate one circuit to do work based on what that instruction is, right? So you have like an if state in a program, you have an if statement, and then based on what, you know, this flag is, then you go and call the right subroutine. But that does not appear to be the case as far as I can tell in, in electronic stuff because... It, the reason you would do it on the computer is because you only want to execute the work that you want, therefore, you know, saving speed and CPU cycles. Um, it would be crazy, for example, to try to execute every single function and then only look at the result of the one function you care about. But in electronics, you can because you just send the data down all the wires, but then only read the data from the wire that you care about after the results are all done. So let's let's figure this out. So um, we're going to implement. So this is our accumulator. In fact, I can rename this and call this the accumulator, for example, just to accumulator like that. Oh, that's nice. OK, so it doesn't normally put the label unless you name it something custom and then puts the label in there. I find that's quite good. So this is supposed to load a value into the accumulator. So the way we would do that is by the source goes in there. So now this is this is all we need to have LDAC running. It will load value 93 into accumulator, done. The next, so, I mean, if we run this by one tick, yep, that's indeed happening. Now, the next instruction is to add a value, is to, whoops, I meant to just go back to edit mode. The next instruction is to add four to whatever's currently in the accumulator. Now, we know how to do addition, right? So an adder, um, is there a way in this to advance it forward? Just ahead of time. Well, again, if I go to the test here and I go here. So instruction number two, we've got the um, add value to accumulator. It's got the four in the source. So what we've got to do is we've got to take the value of the accumulator and the value in the source. Um, I don't know what you would call this. The source block, add them together. And then we'd be storing this in the accumulator. But now we've, we've clearly got a couple of problems. First of all, we only want to overwrite what's in the accumulator. Um, what we're going to choose, like it's either going to be reading, it's going to be feeding from the target into the accumulator, if it's the LDAC. And if it's ADAC, it's got to read from the sum over here and store that in the accumulator. So now we're going to go ahead and use this op selector. So if I go and break that, and we got this op selector, we're going to copy the op brand in here. What this does is it selects the correct input based on um, on this. So what we want to do is if we're loading, right, this is LDAC over here. So in case of LDAC, the output has to be the thing that comes in there. In the case of ADAC, the output is coming from this sum. So it's going to choose which one of these inputs and output that based on whatever this is. So now we're doing this. Now we can probably go and move this around so it looks a little nicer. Um, hmm. I don't, know, I don't know exactly how I want to set this. There, something like that. 
And the last value is to save accumulator to a memory slot. So obviously we're going to be writing. And we're going to be writing, the value we're going to write is going to come out of the accumulator. That's fine. Now, the memory slot we're saving to is always in the destination field of the instruction. Um, I think because the only instruction that ever has something in the destination field is going to be the actual save, we can go ahead and just do that. Take the destination, feed it into mem slot, and that's it. This does not write anything if there's a nil value in here. So this will work. If we had a more complex instruction set and there were different instructions that were using the destination field, then we would have to have another op selector over here. But I think for us, we can save a part by just cheating and saying, the only time this ever has a value is when we're saving. So let's go ahead and give this a run. So first we're gonna load um, 93 into the accumulator. Done. Next we wanna add four to the accumulator. Done, it's at 97. Then we want to save the value of the accumulator into memory slot 91. Oh, I was going to say, it's wrong, but that's the, the final goal. Uh... Oh, whoops, 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 I've been misreading this. This is not... We're loading a value from memory. Okay, that's fine. Easy. Easy peasy. I was being uh, mistaken here in that I was loading the value... I was loading 93 into the accumulator. It's not that. I want to load from memory spot 93. So that's fine. So let's get a reader over here. So your job is to read from this memory slot and put it in there. There we go. Whoopsie daisy. So let's try this again. So you're reading, you're loading in two, then you're adding four to that, then you're saving that value into memory slot 91. Excellent. Then what are we doing? We are then loading the value of memory slot 91 into the accumulator, which is redundant because it was already there. And then we're going to save that value in slot 89, which we have done. And we've completed, and we did it with the ideal number of parts. I'm curious, could we have saved a part? We've got two memory loaders, although I don't think that's really something we can avoid. And I am convinced, if I go and remove this accumulator, which was implemented with a registry file, and replace it with a latch... I'm pretty sure this still runs. Which I find is very interesting. Cool. No, no bonus achievement for doing that. Well, there you go. There's a, there's a quick look at Silicon Zeros. I think it's an excellent, very, very fun test. Oh, greater, look at this nightmare complexity. Ah, uh, I can tell you one thing. Like, again, I took a little bit of a crack at multiply over here. And it's not easy because uh, you do later on actually get a multiplication module, but we don't have one here. So the only way to do multiplication is to loop through a bunch of additions, right? Like, um... So the first example is going to start with this being 7 and 2. Obviously, we're going to want to load this from memory. Because the goal is read read from two memory slots. So read from slot 0 and slot 1. Multiply those together and store them in memory slot 2 over here. So I'm just going to hard code those in for now. And then work on the actual division stuff or multiplication stuff. Um, so what we're going to need... So we're certainly going to need a latch, and we're certainly going to need an adder. Because what we're doing is... So if we do this, so this is going to... Oops, and drag the sum in there. This is going to store the result of our multiplication. This is... So we're going to start... So 7 times 0. The 0th time, we have a value of, of 0. Then we run this once we get a value of seven times one. We run this again, we get a value of seven times two, and so on and so forth. So this is multiplication, one tick at a time. It's pretty bad. It would be a lot slower, actually, if we were doing two times seven as opposed to seven times two, uh, which is why we're gonna need a dedicated module for it, but right now we're fine. 
Um, now what we need to do is we need to stop when we've multiplied uh, the correct amount of times. So, what we're going to do is I think I need another latch. And this latch is here to track how many times we've multiplied the seven. So it's going to need another adder, which will add one every time. So we need another one of these set to one. There we go. So this is keeping track of how many times we have multiplied. Um, let me move this around like this. Because the zero is how many times we've multiplied. So this is the, uh, what, do you, what do you call it for multiplication? Is it product? I guess I could just write total. Here, total. <laughs> um, is there. And this is, um, I don't know. Uh, number of times. There, done. So when the number of times is equal to this value here, we're good. So this is the first module, or the first time I think when we have access to the equal test. So this is very simple. It outputs one if the two things are the same and zero otherwise. So if this value is equal to this value, we are done. And this will turn to a one. Okay. And then what? <laughs> uh... Well, let's, let's run the test and see. So when this value says 1, we should have 14 right there. There. It says 1 and we have 14. Okay. And then if we keep going, it'll go back to 0, but that's fine. Um, and then our goal is going to be save that in slot 2. Let's see here. So really what we've got, I, I did not actually mean to try to solve this right here, but let's let's see what we can do. Uh, copy, paste. So what we're going to have is this is going to start at zero for the core slot and then maybe a couple of adders. Now we can reuse some of these numbers. So, um, actually, you don't need an adder there because you can feed. You're reading from slot zero, but then click copy paste. Oh, I've got the adder already. Um, and then you are going to read from slot zero plus one, which is going to be that. And ultimately, we need to write the value into. that plus one again, which is two. So you're going to be writing, you're going to be writing this value into slot two, but only when we're done. Although I guess you could write it every single tick. Oh! So this is going to write zero, then seven, and it's going to write 14. So it's already got the, the number 14 loaded in there. That's what's going to write regardless, I think, of what changes happen. And the big thing is this goes from 0 to 1. If we... If we have a latch... Whoops. If we grab this latch and put it over here... And use that as our memory input over here and then grab an adder which every tick is taking our current memory slot and adding the value of our equal output which again will be zero most of the time and then change to one and store it in there oh we don't actually want to go up by one we want to go up by three We can't... Oh, that's how many inputs. We can't change this to output a 3 or anything like that. Well, let me, let me just test this. 
because it's going to store the zero, it's going to store the seven, it's going to store the 14. Good. And then it does advance properly. Now, well, it advances, which is what we want, but it only advances by one instead of advancing by three. Also, I need to get rid of you, and you're going to be reading from the memory. Get rid of you, and you're going to be reading from... Uh... Where does this go? Oh, that goes here. Okay, this is a little bit silly. But I can make this be a three. Like this, because this will be either zero or two. So this will come in as a 2 and a 1, which makes it a 3, which we then add into this spot. Nope, I was wrong. Top, and then that goes in the bottom. It seems like more parts than we would like. But this, so at this point over here, this will either be a 0 or a 3. Okay, so we're storing 14. There's the 3, which is going to be added in. So we're going to advance forward. So next we're trying to multiply... 7 times 9. Oh, this accumulator's got to reset down to 0. It is it is doing the right memory, though. But the total's got to get reset to 0. Um, poop. Uh, okay. What other parts do we have access to? We do have an input selector. Oh, hold on. Wait, 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 wait. We can simplify this dramatically. So instead of this, we can have an input selector over here. There we go. So, okay, input selector will take two inputs. And depending on the input select, which is coming from our equal, so it's going to be 0 or 1, it's going to pull that input from there. So if it's 0 and it's not equal, let me get rid of this. If it's not equal, we don't want this latch to change, so we want its current value here to be fed back in. If this goes to 1, then what we want instead is we want its current value plus 3. This is going to take the same amount of parts, isn't it? But it's going to feel a hell of a lot better. And there. So when this changes from a 0 um, to a 1, it's going to return the second value, which is going to be 3 greater than what I was in there before. Okay, that feels a lot better. And more importantly, is the sort of thing we're going to want to do with this latch. So when the equal is 0, so when we haven't reached what we want, you are going to be um, you are going to be storing the result of this adder you're going to be storing the sum but when it goes to one we need to reset you to zero so if we set this to zero in here that way whenever the comp the comparator goes to a value of one It'll then set the next latch value back to zero and reset that. So, again, we're going to go do this. It's going to put in a zero, a seven, a 14. Then it advances to the next memory slot. Uh, and you can see this has been reset. Now it's going to be doing seven times nine, which is going to be a hell of a long loop. Uh, what's seven times nine? 63. So, slot number five. Uh, you can go backwards, which is interesting. Oh, I've got to reset the number of times as well. Poop. The number of times has to be reset back down to zero. 
um, using exactly this sort of setup here. So we need to back you up. I need another input selector, um, which reads from the equal thing, pumps in there, pumps in there. So this will give us a way to reset the number of times counter. We're getting a real mess now. Okay, so fast forward to 14. So we now go to 63, it advances. We should get a value of 12, it advances. We'll then get a value of 70. Oh my God, I got two achievement. I got two achievement, I've got better than the ideal. How, 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 what, what? I got, I used 18, oh, 18, the magic number, 18 modules. The ideal was 20. I wonder, oh man. And I mean, clearly the game developers knew that the quote unquote ideal for at least some of the puzzles was not the true ideal. Holy crap. I'm so excited. Now it's not a fast multiplier. And that's why later on, uh, when you go here, they add some speed stuff. There's this quadruple thing. So there's like timing stuff to deal with. You actually get access to a, a multiplication module. Again, this is very, the tutorial part of the timing thing, but it's super, super, super slow. And this quadrupling thing can just be done faster with a couple of adders and a chain. But clearly for a more complex number, having the multiplication module is going to be a lot faster. Um, holy crap, I got the multiplication. I mean, it's a damn mess. But it's there. I wonder if there's something better. You can actually, um, how do I get that scoreboard up again? If I just run this, yeah, actually, click, 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 click. You see there's a tick limit too we have to worry about in this particular scenario. I guess I can just hold this down for speed. Um, compare score online. Um, I don't know how to read this. Is the blue what I got? Which means there's no one lower, I guess, but a lot of people have figured out the 18. I th I'm assuming is how to read that, but I don't actually know. Whoo! Well, folks, there it is. This is Silicon Zeros. A fun little puzzle game. I mean, again, with as with all puzzle games, presumably there's, you know, a finite number of stuff, but it is very, very enjoyable and actually a good learning tool probably for lots of people. Um, and again, does teach you, uh, you know, latches and things like that and memory readers and writers and adders are actual, like, you can, you can actually just get those chips. You could make, like, you could make uh, uh, the simple CPU with a crap ton of these chips. I mean, really, some of the first computers were these giant boards with all these individual chips that we're doing very much what this is. And one of the things that happens with, you know, actual CPUs is that these various subcomponents all get, like, you know, wired into what goes onto a single chip in the end. But we're really, it's, it's very real. I think that's wonderful. Thanks for watching, folks. See you next time.